Let us pray. Most gracious and glorious Lord, we are so thankful to be in your house today, to worship you for who you are as Father and Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, for all that you so graciously bless us with. We give you thanks. So may your Holy Spirit fall afresh upon us that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may each hear with joy what you say to us today. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us sing, Come Thou Almighty King, hymn number 61. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 50 through 58. This is what I am saying, brothers and sisters. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Something that rots cannot inherit something that doesn't decay. Listen, I am telling you a secret. All of us won't die, but we all will be changed. In an instant, in the blink of an eye at the final trumpet, the trumpet will blast and the dead will be raised with bodies that won't decay, and we will be changed. It's necessary for this rotting body to be clothed with what cannot decay, and for the body that is dying to be clothed in what cannot die. And when the rotting body has been clothed in what cannot decay, and the dying body has been clothed in what cannot die, this is a statement of Scripture that will happen. Death has been swallowed up by victory. Where, O victory, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Death's sting is sin. And the power of sin is the law. Thanks be to God who gives us this glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. As a result of this, my beloved brothers and sisters, you must stand firm, unshakable, 
excelling in the work of the Lord as always, because you know that your labor isn't going to be for nothing in the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today we begin our Lenten sermon series called Ashes, Ashes, We All Fall Down. We all know that uh, nursery rhyme. We know how on the playground for generations the children have gathered and held hands in a circle and they would sing that rhyme. Some people say that it dated back uh, as far as the Black Plague, but there are many different um, thoughts of whether that's correct or not correct. That's not necessarily our point today. But I will use it because just like the Black Plague or the flu or the coronavirus or any other disease that sort of uh, gets our attention, it helps us to begin to look at our mortality and how fragile and vulnerable we are as human beings. And at the end of that nursery rhyme, when the kids drop down to the ground, Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. One thing that is sure and certain in this life is that we will sin. We will make mistakes. And because of that sin, we will fall down. And because we do not live forever, a day is going to come when we will fall down and from ashes we came and to ashes we will go again. It's important for us during this Lenten time to reflect on our lives and our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To reflect on our relationship with our Creator to be honest with ourselves as we look into that mirror of our hearts or of our souls and to be able to ask the question, what can I do better? Do I need to pray more, study more, be an example to humanity of what a follower of Jesus looks like? a dedicated disciple of Jesus and what that looks like. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter if people have stopped calling us a sinner and have started calling us a saint. We do that in some churches. We say that we have sinners and saints, but even saints sin, so we are all sinners. And we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But the awesome thing is, is that we are created in God's image. And because of what Jesus did at Easter, we have an opportunity to be forgiven. We have an opportunity to walk with Jesus even now. We live in a world that in almost every corner that you look at, whether it's on the internet, in relationships, in our lives, what's going on in our country or around the world, it seems like there's a lot of darkness. And in Lent, we don't celebrate that darkness, but we focus on what the cause of that darkness is. And the cause of that darkness is sin. And it's important for us to be honest with ourselves about that darkness in which we are so comfortable living in. It's amazing how Paul said, there are things that I want to do, but I don't do them. I do the things 
that I don't want to do even though I don't want to do them. That is what we do in our lives. We try to be faithful, but we cannot be faithful the way God is faithful. And so we think that we are better off doing it our own way, and then we get ourselves into trouble. I was laying down in the bed with one of the kids this week, and the nightlight out in the hall was not on. When I turned the lamp out, it was pitch black in the room. And, and one of them said, it's too dark, I can't see, I can't see. I said, just wait a minute. Your eyes will adjust, and you'll be able to see. And after a few minutes, out of the darkness, you could start to see your hand in front of your face. You could see the shadow of the television and the dresser. And it wasn't as scary as it was before. When we get a pattern of doing things that we're not supposed to do, being in the darkness doesn't affect us as much. We sort of become comfortable there. We don't mind it. It doesn't make us feel guilty or as shameful as it perhaps once did, whatever our sin might be. And over time, we just get used to that. We get comfortable. But then, out of the blue, let somebody walk into the bedroom and flick on the light switch. And you're blinded by the light. And still, if you wait a few minutes, you get used to it. And you become comfortable in the light. And you can see with full vision and clarity and color and crispness that which is around you. We live in a world that would want to keep us in darkness. We live in a world that says, even though you can't live forever, look at all these procedures you can have on your body. Take away all those wrinkles. The stuff that is sagging doesn't have to sag anymore. You can use these creams and you can do all of these different things to make yourself look younger, right? You don't have to tell me if you all use them or not. I know you do. I know you do. But that doesn't stop the aging process. There is only one person in the history of humanity that did not die and stay dead. And that was Jesus. But we don't have to live our lives in death. We don't have to live our lives in the darkness. Because of what Jesus did, he overcame the darkness. He defeated death. He made something that he made something possible that wasn't possible before. And that is what is supposed to live inside of us. That is something that's supposed to live inside of us. <clears throat> Banana. This banana has a couple dark spots on it, but for the most part, it's still a good banana, right? I mean, I, mean, I, would, I would eat it. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Is that banana going to go rotten? Eventually. It is. Okay. 
And then we have this. This banana was just peeled this morning. And already, there's a difference between what's on the outside, right? What are the differences in these two bananas? One has something in it, and the other one doesn't. They're both going to die. But the one that is alive, the one that can offer nourishment, the one that can offer sustenance and what is needed for life is the one that has something in it. The one that is pretty much all dead. Oh, that's gross. Um, And there's a little bit of banana down in there and it's all yucky. Um, The one that is empty, the one that is ugly, is the one that doesn't have anything in it anymore. Do you have in your life that which offers you sustenance, that nourishes your soul, that revives your spirit, that gives you energy to be a faithful disciple? Which of those are you? It is my hope that as we reflect on our lives and in our relationship with Jesus, that we would all imagine a world of nice, full, ripe bananas. And that would be what each of us strive to be. At some point in our lives, we all fall down. But through new life in Jesus, we don't have to stay down. When you come for communion today, I invite you, no matter how you take it, to kneel at the altar and to ask God to fill you with all fruitfulness and all faithfulness so that you can go forward truly making a difference in this world for him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and join as we sing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, hymn number 452.
please be seated. Please bow with me as we pray. Eternal and everlasting God. Eternal and everlasting. That is so difficult for us to wrap our minds around. But we are so thankful that you are different than us. That you have been around longer than us. That you have more experience than us. More wisdom than us. And can love much, much deeper than us. God, that is why we are so grateful for these experiences when we can come before you giving you the worship and the praise that you so rightly deserve. You know, even in our faithfulness, we fall short. That even in our striving to worship other gods and be gods ourselves, that we are sadly mistaken. And so we ask you to Counsel us on how we can be more faithful followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us when we fall to be raised in a new way, in a new life. as disciples of your son, Jesus. God, you know the darkness that surrounds us. You know that which worries us and has us trembling with fear. You know our sorrows and our joys. Would you like to hear it from us? So hear us as we lift our prayers aloud to you in our hearts this day. Holy God, we are thankful for the way that you forgive us. For the way that your grace and your mercy just continues to amaze us. Help us to realize that we can live out of the darkness. And into a light that can never be extinguished the light of your love. We thank you for all you are and all you do. And so we lift up these prayers and we say this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us worship our God with our tithes and our gifts.
Let us pray. Father, we come to you this day in need of spiritual maintenance as we do every day at some point in our lives. Bless this offering. Help us to understand that this is a reflection of our love for you and our gratefulness for the gift of your Son. These things we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated.
Thank you all so much. That is what we are about to do is to come to Jesus. We still have concerns about uh, the flu and other things that are going around, and we want to make sure that everybody uh, is as uh, clean as possible. I'm not exactly sure the choir has uh, anything. I'm going to give them mine to pass around. But for those of you who are in the pews, you will notice at the end of each pew, on each end of each pew, there is hand sanitizer. So when you prepare to come up, use the hand sanitizer, and that way um, everybody will have clean hands and we should be good, okay? Okay. Holy hand sanitizer is what a buddy of mine called it, holy hand sanitizer. Holy God, as we come before you, we want to come out of the darkness and live in the inextinguishable light that is yours. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, for your willingness to send your Son, who on the night in which he was betrayed gave thanks to you offered the bread that would be his body and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. As a holy and living sacrifice. For you. May your Holy Spirit fall afresh upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ that is given for you. blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. It does not matter your age, your stage of life, what denomination you might be, all are welcome to the Lord's table here in this church. This table has been set. These are the gifts of God for us, the precious children of God. Let us come and commune with our God. Would the communion stewards please come forward? The 
Did y'all use hand sanitizer? We have a gluten-free option um, that uh, anybody that would like to partake of that uh, can do that. Stay with me. Okay, you all good. Just stand.
Let us pray. Holy God, we are so grateful that through Jesus Christ, you have given yourself to us. And now may we go forth into the world as Jesus' disciples, giving ourselves to others. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing Victory in Jesus, hymn number 370.
Where is your sting, O death? We are victorious, and we have indeed a victory in Jesus. So let us all go forth forgiven, redeemed, and renewed, rising from the ashes as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.